Hello everybody, welcome to my book vlog. For the next three vlogs, I'm going to chat through the six books that comprise this year's Bailey's Prize shortlist. Um, and I'm going to start off with uh, Lisa McKenney's Glorious Heresies, and then we're going to chat about Anne Enright's The Green Road. Got that? These two? Okay. So the reason why I picked these two to start with is I thought there was an interesting compare and contrast there, given that both writers are Irish and both books are set in contemporary Ireland. Uh, but also because, as you probably all now know, Lisa McKenney's Glorious Heresies won the Bailey's Prize, um, and it was Anne's book, The Green Road, that was actually the bookie's favourite. Okay, you ready? Okay, so let's start with The Glorious Heresies. This book is, is glorious, it's ferocious, it's exciting and it's dynamic and it's bold. I think one of the most exciting things about the decision from the Bailey's Prize judging panel was to give the award to this book because it is so bold. It's Lisa's debut novel and I kind of half feel bad for her that she has done so well off just her first one. I hope she doesn't find it too much of a pressure because this is a great book. This is set in contemporary Cork and Lisa takes it all on. There's nothing off the table. This is a book that examines austerity politics, poverty, gangland killings, casual violence, uh, trauma, um, sex work, alcoholism, drugs, the corruption of the Catholic Church. Um, nothing is off the table. Um, the plot itself is incredibly intricate, but fascinating. It follows the accidental killing of a man. Um, Maureen kills a man, an intruder in her kitchen. Unfortunate for Maureen, but it shouldn't be a problem considering Maureen's son is Jimmy, Cork's most feared gangster. Only she has a very difficult relationship with her son. And when Georgie, the girlfriend of the dead man, starts knocking on the door to find out what happened to her boyfriend, things start to get very complicated. And this is exacerbated when Jimmy delegates the task of disposing the body to Tony, uh, a man battling alcoholism, as well as his son, Ryan, who's rapidly becoming a prolific drug dealer on the streets of Cork. Um, in only her debut novel, Lisa tackles what almost every writer is told not to do. Don't, don't, don't mess with your points of view. Well, in this, that goes out the window. Lisa follows the plot from each character's point of view. And the, the clever thing about that is that you see how this one almost random event of this accidental killing it ripples out the, the repercussions ripple out across society and have all these knock-on effects that almost couldn't have been imagined just from this one act um, and the wonderful thing is about that is it isn't just a gimmick because these are really fleshed out characters they are complex they are full of contradictions they are real they feel really real and there is pain in here for sure, but there is also real humour and great characterisation. I've been recommending this to absolutely everyone and I recommend this to you too. And I think it was great that the Bailey's Prize panel, like I said, gave it to this book because it's really exciting stuff. Um, Glorious Heresies. I hope Lisa gets a real bounce from winning that award because this book should be read by many people and hopefully you're one of them, right? Good. Okay, so now we're going to chat about Anne Enright's The Green Road. Um, I absolutely understand why this was the bookie's favourite to win the award. It, this is a flawless book. It's utterly flawless. And when I've been sort of tweeting out on Twitter about the books that I'm reading and how I'm doing, it was The Green Road that got the biggest response because it has just touched so many other readers. This book is heartbreaking. It, it's, um, it's as if Anne takes your heart into her hands and and crushes it. It's about family ties and family bonds, ugly and permanent as they are. It follows uh, an elderly woman called Rosaline, who has two sons and two daughters, all grown up now. Her two sons went her abroad and live abroad, but her two daughters have remained in Ireland. But her sudden and surprising decision to sell the family home brings her four children back to her. And what you realise as this book progresses, is that Rosaline is a mother in name only to her four children. She is a woman who's bitter, can be spiteful, uh, has shown no tendress or affection to her four children throughout their lives. Uh, and though her two boys have this big 
physical distance b between themselves and their mother as they live overseas, you realise that distance is also matched in emotional terms by her daughters, um, who get nothing from their relationship with their mother, though they spend all their time making sure she's okay and checking in, that, that responsibility to care for her never leaving. Um, but what I love most about this book is that nothing happens. A, a big things happen, but nothing changes because we don't change. We don't really change. Whatever happens to us, um, we carry all our experiences with us and they shape us and define us and shape and define how we react to each other. And in families where you have a bond that is permanent and enduring, but you don't get to pick your family, uh, but somehow that connection remains. It's, and it's a beautiful examination of unhappy families, each family being unhappy in its own separate ways. Um, but it's beautiful, and the power of Anne's writing is that you will see and uh, see a reflection of your own family or some element of your family bonds in here. It's it's tender and it's and it's beautiful, um, and uh, deserves to be widely read. But it is one that will touch you very much. Uh, so please read this, and you too, uh, I'm sure, will love it as much as clearly everyone else has. Okay, so those are my uh, two books that we've chatted about and we'll get on to the next four in my next vlogs. Happy reading.